Well, hello there, and you join us here today to talk about not just normal watches, but crazy, insane, absolutely unbelievable watches. We've got 10 of them, and you're going to love it. If you're looking for a less crazy watch, perhaps, or even a crazy one, check out watchfinder.com for your next pre-owned watch purchase. Tom, um, you're a crazy man, uh, a man of, of many great talents who, no end of surprise. What kind of watch would you purchase? Would you purchase a crazy one? When I started my watch journey um, many weeks ago, I I was very dull dishwater. I like blue dials. Just give me simple steel sports, and that's all I need. But now I've I've had a taste of the wild side, and blue is not enough. I need craziness. I'm a wild man of watches now. We've all been there. We start off fairly vanilla, and at some point it just doesn't do it for us anymore, and we get weirder and weirder and weirder until at one point or another we wonder what on earth we're doing with our lives. Um, so here we are to find 10 very weird and wonderful watches of all different prices. I think you'll be surprised by some of the ones that we have in here. Tom, why don't you start off with something from Audemars Piguet? This is the Royal Oak Concept Tourbillon Spider-Man. It's an open work complication limited to 250 pieces and you may notice Spider-Man appears as the hero of the timepiece. It's 42 millimeters in titanium and black ceramic. It's got a new hand wound calendar, the 2974. Um, now if all you complequistadors out there know that that's based on the caliber 2948. I'm sure you're already aware. <laughs> As I said, it's an open work tourbillon movement. It's got white gold hour markers and hands with luminescent coating, black rubber strap with titanium folding clasp. Um, but it's all about that big Spider-Man on the dial, Peter Parker, or PP, as he's uh, lovingly referred to in the comic books. Um, and he required no less than 50 hours work of hand engraving and hand painting by eliminating as much material as possible, they have been able to achieve a level of transparency that allows Spider-Man's character to appear in a three-dimensional form as if passing through the tourbillon mechanism. Now, it looks like he's swinging through the skeletonized openworks of the tourbillon there, and that's most apparent when you turn the watch over and you can see his little feet poking through. Um, so, very heroic and iconic on the front, but on the back, a um, little pair of Spider-Man feet, which is very, very funny. Now, this to me smacks a little bit of how do you do fellow kids. I don't know if that is what you're getting. Um, Are you sure this is definitely Spider-Man? Because he looks a little bit off to me. Are you sure it's not his non-union Mexican equivalent, uh, Speedre Hombre? I'm pretty sure. I can imagine the phone call to like the Disney Marvel licensing department. Hello, this is Odemar PK. We'd like to produce a Spider-Man watch. It's your lucky day. And they were like, sorry, who are you? <laughs> it's like, oh yes, actually, no, I'd, I've got my name on a waiting list for a Royal Oak. Can I jump to the top if I say yes? You make quite fancy watches. Yeah, we'll make a ton of money selling loads of these. Actually, no, we'll only sell 250, but we will sell them for... 195,000 Swiss francs. So there you go, Spider-Man fans. Or not. <laughs> Tom, might I draw your attention next to a watch from F.P. Jean, mastermind of grumpy man Francois Paul Jean. This is a particular watch unlike any other. So you might know Francis Ford Coppola, famed uh, movie direction man. Mm -hmm. His wife purchased an F.P. Jean for him. A fairly standard one by the brand's usual measure. He decided that he wanted a custom watch, a very unusual one that was inspired by the old way of counting time. He sounds like a nightmare to buy for. <laughs> I don't want standard FP John, I want custom FP John. Flips table. So he decided he wanted a watch that counted on its fingers. Sure. So he went back to nursery school with a counting on its fingers watch. And Francois Paul Jean obliged. Um, this is where it kind of gets a bit weird because Mr. Jean wasn't just inspired by hands. He was inspired by a barber who became a physician who invented a special type of hand prosthesis. Easy for me to say. And that prosthesis used a specific mechanism that has been replicated in this watch. Right. Now, all that is to distract you from the fact that there are 12 hours in a day and only five fingers, including a thumb, on a hand. So you might be wondering, how on earth do you tell the time with this thing? Yes. Well, 
Um, here's the hand. Here's the hand. One. I think that's easy enough. Two. Bit rude. Three. Easy. Then four. Yeah. And of course, stick the, th the thumb out for five. Okay, sure. Here's where it kind of gets weird, though, because six is like hitchhiking. Okay. Then you go seven. So we've moved on to the other hand now, yeah, sure. Basically, yeah, basically. Eight. Yep. Nine. Okay, all good so far. Yeah, yeah. Ten. Oh, dear. Then eleven. Like... Little Pinky, number 11. <laughs> and then for all you rock and roll fans out there, 12. Nice. So telling the time might be an exercise in futility with this watch, but at least it's only $902,090. How strange. Cool, though. Tom, moving on from one watch that seems particularly useless to one that might be incredibly useful. I'm going to bring it back down to earth now. <laughs> <laughs> this is the Richard Mill RM2501, the manual winding tourbillon chronograph adventure. Now, this is a million dollar watch here, people, from Richard Mill. And I'm just going to catch you up to speed on the thinking behind this watch. So it was developed in collaboration with Sylvester Stallone, born from a desire on the part of Richard Mill and the actor to conquer the most thoroughly hostile of natural environments, uh, truly a horological UFO. This timepiece is, as Stallone says, ready for action. Um, so... Uh, uh, there's another bit I want to highlight from Richard Mill here. They've, they've got a little bit of a synopsis on Stallone. Uh, so, 80s Hollywood actor, uh, serene, endearing, authentic, sincere, also an artist, yeah, yeah, great painting and sculpture. Right. He doesn't cheat. Excuse me? Uh, just get that in there. <laughs> so, monogamous. In relationships, at sports, monopoly? I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know. Stallone assumes sole responsibility for his creations. I see that as strength, as powerful. Okay. Um, but let's, so let's get into the $1 million monstrosity that they've created here. So it's a manual winding tourbillon movement with 24 hour display, chronograph with a 30 minute totalizer. Uh, I believe that's, the chronograph can go up to 30 minutes. Sounds good. As long as you don't need to measure 31. It's not enough for a million dollars. Um, power reserve, torque indicator, supplies information about the mainspring's tension, function indicators, which indicate the function as follows, winding neutral hands, uh, 72 hours of power reserve, that's fine. The base plate and bridges in grade five titanium, but now we get to it, a compass that consists of a fixed bezel and a rotating bezel made of carbon TPT. No way. But the compass bezel flips up to reveal the bi-directional daytime bezel. Oh my goodness. The the titanium bezel can be exchanged for a daytime bezel. Um, so you've got to theme your bezels, you know, you've got to have your daytime bezel. You've got to be bezel appropriate, Andrew. You know, that's really <laughs> more of a weekend bezel, what you've got there. Um, and then you've got a spirit level. The spirit level contained within a titanium bubble makes it possible to hold the watch exactly horizontal to improve accuracy when sighting with the compass needle. The IKEA special edition. I mean, it's crazy. It's so, I mean, so many bezels, so many functions. <laughs> the watch also has a small module in grade five titanium, hermetically sealed to stash water purification tablets. Other tablets may also be stored that can make any source of water safe to drink. Excellent. Excellent. Tom, if I might be able to take you to Ulysse Nardin for one moment, this is the Freak one. And I don't mean this is the Freak one that they make. This watch is actually called the Freak. Initially debuted in 2001, the Freak did a number of different things that are quite crazy, and they have modernised it. You know, taken out the old model, given it a little bit of tarting up, and put it on for sale again. Um, but the original was crazy for a number of reasons. One, it was the first watch to ever have silicon, the darling material of modern watchmaking. The first one ever had a crazy escapement, whereby uh, it used two escape wheels instead of one for more accuracy. But also, perhaps the most visible feature of this entire watch is that the entire movement is the minute hand, which just looks absolutely unbelievable in the dial. And while you're ogling at that, you might come to realize 
there's no crown. Here's another crazy thing about the Freak. Um, a little lever at six o'clock, which has the Freak branding on it, is lifted with a thumbnail and allows you to set the time by turning the entire bezel. Everything about this is, how do we do watches but the other way? Oh, they use the crown, do they? Nope. Oh, they put the movement in the back, do they? Nope. Oh, they tell the time with hands, do they? Nope. All for the princely sum of $68,600, which in the in the rest of the company we've had here so far is a little bit of a bargain. <laughs> Absolute bargain. It's the first one that isn't really a bit of a monster. And you can just admire the, the freaky complication in the middle. Very, very nice. Tom, let's say for argument's sake, you had ooh, $20 million to spend on a watch. How would you spend it? I would go straight to the Jacob & Co shop and pick myself up a billionaire watch. Oh. Now, there have been several billionaire watches over the years. Um, I think this is the fourth iteration, um, which I'm going to get with my $20 million. The Billionaire Timeless Treasure. Sounds good, doesn't it? The Billionaire Timeless Treasure is made of 425 natural Asher cut yellow diamonds, 76 emerald cut and kite cut zavarite, and 57 natural baguette cut yellow diamonds set on its skeleton tool beyond movement. Now, these are diamonds that I can't even pronounce. These are specialist diamonds. <laughs> so, what you'll see here is just a watch that has been carpet bombed with yellow diamonds. It is absolutely encrusted to the max. That's the word I like to hear about my luxury purchase, <laughs> encrusted. But impeccably so, because what you've got here is you've got diamonds that have been sourced and set very, very specifically and skillfully. So they've all been impeccably color matched and then set with the biggest ones around the dial and then getting smaller in size incrementally as they move away from the dial and around the clasp. So they, very, very nice uniform kind of tapering of these diamonds. Jacob & Co is very specifically states these are yellow diamonds, not yellow sapphires, Andrew, which are much easier to come by. Yeah. And not just any yellow diamonds, but the very finest yellow diamonds. Um, during a three and a half year treasure hunt across the globe, Jacob & Co had almost dried up the market for exceptionally large and high quality yellow diamonds to complete the billionaire timeless treasure. So there were no yellow diamonds for little Jimmy that Christmas um, because Jacob & Co used them all up montage of um jacob and co like yoinking yellow diamonds out of people's hands around the world <laughs> yeah this reminds me did you have as a child a big box of random lego yeah yeah you'd be making a creation of your own imagination and you'd be looking for that one piece that you were a hundred percent sure that you had mm -hmm. and you could never find it it's like that but with diamonds it is yeah oh, i need a tour are there, are there any tours what an unbelievable piece of $20 million watchmaking, Tom. Um, a fine choice, and I think it will suit you well. Thank you. Yeah, I look forward to it coming in the post. Moving on to something a little cheaper. This is the Argon Space One, and uh, it is a creation of Theo Ofray, the famed French high-end watchmaker and Guillaume Lede, a guy who uh, brought back the brands Nevada and Volcane um, fairly recently. They have an aspiration to create very, very cool watches in limited runs, i.e. once it's gone, it's gone, to bring some of that Oud Horologie high-end crazy watchmaking that you see from the likes of Debetune and MBNF and Orberg into the hands of the common man. This Space One is the first in that collection. It's inspired very, very closely by the Debetune Dream Watch 5. Uh, it's made in Switzerland. Uh, built in France, where Theo can keep an eye on things. It includes, like the Dreamwatch one, uh, in the little glass cockpit you'll see centred, um, nestled right in the middle of the watch. It has a jump hour complication, which is designed by Theo and added to the Swiss movement there. Um, and it starts at $1,500, which I think you'll agree, especially in this company, is much less than you might have considered. Absolute bargain. I mean, that's almost the price of like a normal watch. Um, but this looks anything but normal. This looks highly futuristic. It looks like it's doing much more than, than meets the eye. You know, it's very futuristic. 
is there like a USB stick in there that, you know, you can take the cap off one end of it or something? Perhaps with the limited edition, extra limited edition, titanium or carbon fibre version, people might think, whoa, he must have been in trouble with the police and they need to keep track of him. <laughs> it's quite a sinister looking uh, spaceship, isn't it? In, in polished and brushed titanium, they even do a blue titanium, which is in a nod to the most expensive Debitude Dreamwatch 5. Really, really cool piece. But I must say... The Kickstarter that it's on runs out on the 10th of June. And that that's it. Done. No more. Oh, did they meet their goal? They did it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then some. <laughs> cool. Okay, moving on then to our next one. This is a Berens. Um, careful how you say that. The Peregrine. <laughs> right, this is a $13,000 watch, uh, limited to 200 pieces. 43 millimeters in titanium. It's a hand-wound mechanical movement that was developed in-house by Behrens over two years. 18,000 oscillations per hour and a power reserve of 45 hours. Right, But the coolest thing, the main thing that you'll notice, two things you might notice about this watch, is the big earth, the big globe in the center of the dial, and also the big chain running around it. So this is the celestial display earth moon system version 2.0 and this is it here so it's a really cool kind of rotating globe and uh, our lunar body orbiting around it thanks to the the cool chain um, which also has the hours attached to it so you can read the time via the the hours via the blue arrow that juts out of the side of the globe and then there's a retrograde minutes uh, counter dial on the other side very spacey very cool and um, probably a bit of a steal for $13,000. I'm not sure I fully understand what's going on here, Tom. Is there perhaps a helpful piece of uh, literature you might be able to read for me? There is. Um, I'm sure you'll find it as helpful as I did. So uh, they state about the, the movement, um, the Earth-Moon system. For the first time, a micro chain with ruby bearing mechanical system is used, which differs from the traditional form of the sesame chain, which is similar in size in that the micro chain with ruby bearing, the difference is that the micro chain with ruby bearing is a micro chain driven by two skeletonized gears. Uh, so yeah, did that, yeah. So, okay, you clear on that now? What? Do you need to, to repeat the bit about the micro chain with ruby bearing or... Yeah, yeah, I'm with that. <laughs> I think we'll gloss over that because I don't understand it. Um, what is impressive is uh, for many, many years, people have said, why don't the Chinese make their own watches? And this is them saying, okay, yeah. if this were any other brand from any other location, I don't think the price would be $13,000. I think it would be a lot more. Yeah. So it's very impressive to see what they've done. And that ruby bearing chain that you so eloquently described is really cool. Very, very interesting. It's great, isn't it? Tom, to bring down the budget by half, this is the Agelosa Sapphire Tourbillon. Now, let me set the scene. Sapphire cased tourbillon watches, when they come from people like Richard Mill, cost many millions. When they come from Hublot, following up the rear, they come for many half a millions. This one. You can see very much evidence there. It has a full sapphire case and crown. It has twin barrels. It has a tourbillon, very elegantly displayed in that uh, skeletonized movement there. 5,333 pounds, including shipping from DHL. <laughs> I think you'll agree that that is a lot of watch for the money, especially on paper. Is, is that actually sapphire? That's not acrylic. No, it's not like one of those little bubble things that your nana purchased in the mall. <laughs> yeah, it's funky, isn't it? I like the I like the coloured uh, indices there. I don't know if that's coloured sapphire or some other kind of gem. Um, very interesting. Tom, this is a limited edition. Um, there are only 100 pieces. And you might be wondering, why so cheap? Well, the answer is the same as the last time. It's Chinese. Um, and I think what gives it away is the awkward branding that is much, much too difficult to pronounce and much, much too big, I think you'll agree. Way too big. And in just like aerial font by the looks of it as well. Um, Agelosa as well. It's a bit clunky, but it reminds me of like Age Locker, which is, could be a good kind of anti-wrinkle cream or something, couldn't it? Indeed, Tom. Um, but perhaps back to a slightly more expensive insane watch. What have you got for us now? So, okay, let's have a look at the 
Vanguard Black Hole Torbion. This is a sci-fi inspired Torbion watch. 775 components were needed to build this watch. The main plate and bridges in grade five titanium, micro blasted satin finish, block polished and hand beveled. The case is available in titanium, rose gold or platinum and they're all limited to eight pieces each. The time is displayed on three coaxial discs with semi-instantaneous time scrolling and they orbit around uh, a flying tourbillon in the middle and you can see also in line with the black hole theme that the dial slopes inwards towards the center like the the collapsing of space-time and the tourbillon is floating above the dial in the center like the vortex of a black hole so that's very cool and there's lots of really nice clever details and and innovations that they've snuck in this watch um if that wasn't enough so those aren't crowns andrew those are joysticks to set the time yes um a world first and patent pending uh and let's see what they say the joystick designed in-house allows for a more intuitive control of time engage it in one direction and it runs continuously engage it in the other direction and time flows back we design complications, but what you interact with is a simplification. Um, so I hope that's clear. Um, it did sound like they were just describing the functionality of a crown, but yeah. <laughs> but uh, when you see it, oh wow, well, that's the joystick. <laughs> um, the black hole caliper is housed in an envelope designed like a skin. It embraces all the possible space. Okay. Um, <laughs> Today itself. This watch is so impressed by its own ability to tell the time that if you look at the indicator for the hours, it doesn't say hours, it says hours. Cool. Hours. Crikey. On to our very, very last watch of this crazy watch collection, we move to the HYT Conical Tourbillon for a theme of centrally mounted tourbillons. Um, you might remember that HYT has been around the block a little bit. It came and it went. The whole idea was liquid time. And by that, I mean a glass vial around the outside edge, which is filled with two kinds of liquids, one a very vivid green, the other clear, separated by a meniscus, Tom, meniscus, uh, powered by two bellows, which uh, suck and blow, I guess, but move the liquid around so you can read the time from the outer edge. That didn't work so well originally, it was quite delicate. I do remember um, having a play with one and the, the lady there said, oh, be very careful with it, set the time slowly, it's going to blow up in your face and you'll get shards of sapphire crystal in your eyes. That didn't really work out, but it is back, it is much more robust, and it is more impressive than ever. Now with the conical tourbillon, because it also has a tourbillon sat right in the centre with the liquid display orbiting the outside. I think you'll agree it looks pretty sci-fi it is balmy it looks like a mad professor's experiment doesn't it like uh, you could imagine this filling a great hall and um our heroes get there too late because it's already gone off and um <laughs> it's whirling yeah. around furiously and um and we're all doomed it's crazy i love it i love the sort of venomous green to it and those little orbs which are they filled with the what did you say it was juice the juice <laughs> it's definitely going to get into the wrong hands i know that much if it shatters uh there will be an awesome mutation occurring uh, on anyone in the vicinity <laughs> um tom all yours for the princely sum of three hundred and thirty-five thousand swiss francs Ooh. excluding taxes oh that's excellent so make sure to budget for your taxes. Yeah, <laughs> they really rinse you on the taxes with this thing. Um, maybe I could get it in the Channel Islands. Uh, do they have a boutique <laughs> on Guernsey, perhaps? So there you go, a lesson for all of us. Make sure to pay your taxes, and therefore you won't have all your monies taken away, and you will be able to buy one of these crazy, insane watches. If you've seen a crazy, insane watch, let us know in the comments down below. Please like and subscribe as well, and check out Watchfinder for your next pre-owned watch purchase. Thank you very much, and goodbye. <laughs>